Hey, Goliathan. Yeah, I mean... Debatably, I should do this. Uh, when people are actually, like, awake. But, uh... I don't know, I uh, just felt like doing this now, so I'm gonna do it. So yeah, this is uh, me kind of putting my money where my mouth is and doing a tutorial video for the new any percent route. As we now know how to skip every faction contract in diamonds and spades. So I'm gonna go through the new route and basically re-explain everything. I've already done an any percent tutorial, but I'm gonna just start from scratch, assume that whoever's watching this knows nothing about speedrunning the game, and uh, cover as much as I can. So, let's get started. To start any speedrun of this game, the first thing you want to do is load up a save file. It doesn't actually matter what the save file is, but this will make it so that basically the game does a, a few things the first time you start playing that it never does again. It initializes a few systems that it never has to do again, and that takes a little extra time. So just, just load up some file uh, so that when you start the game, because timer starts right right when you hit start, <laughs> uh, you can do that just to save a second or two. Character selection. There used to be a distinction between the characters by category. Like, some of the characters were better for different categories based on what we thought we knew about the game at the time. Uh, that's all out the window. Mui is the best character for every category, full stop. So the reason for that is because she runs faster than Jacobs, and she has faster dialogue than Nielsen. That's it. So Nielsen and her run the same speed, but she has slightly faster dialogue than Nielsen. On top of this, she also is given a bit of a stealth buff bonus. We don't know exactly how this bonus works, but it seems to have something to do with sound. So enemies seem to notice Mui just as much as any other character visually, but if you're kind of running around um, behind a character that's like not looking, or behind an NPC that's not looking at you, an enemy in particular. If you're playing as Nielsen or Jacobs, that enemy will hear your footsteps and be alerted to you. Whereas with Mui, you can kind of get away undetected a bit more often. This doesn't play that much of a role in most of the categories. It is a nice to have in 100%, but even for that category, it's not necessary. But the real benefits are just the fact that she runs and talks faster than the other mercs. So the start here is very simple. All you need to do is just walk over and pick up the things. No choice here, go pick up the PDA. After this, you'll have a choice to pick up the frag grenades or your uh, M4. The M4 is a slightly uh, more optimal route. But yeah, back to, just to put a pin in the character selection thing. Even though she is the fastest, it doesn't really matter who you choose. Especially now with the new discovery, world record's possible with any character. But even even when it's like in a fairly competitive state, like even when... Even with, uh, before these new discoveries, when I had my 44 or 5x run, that was probably within a minute of what was, like, human achievable. Even then, I could see someone better than me coming around, picking Jacobs because they like Jacobs, and getting a faster time. I think that's totally possible. So, there's a thing in the game that we call speed bursts. It's kind of difficult to tell whether this is an intended mechanic or a glitch. It's there, and there's two there's two types of speed bursts. So basically, the the basic principle is when you're sitting at a standstill here, you can press stop the brakes. Well, if you just do brakes, you go backwards, or the e brake. Oops, that's not the e brake. That's getting out of the vehicle. E brake is right trigger, not left trigger. So right now I'm doing the e brake, and then if you start doing gas, you'll kind of sit in place, and then if you let go of the e brake, well, bad example. Does it even work with? I thought it. I thought it. Okay. 
Oh, interesting. I, I've never... I, I See, I, I always do the brake start. So, yeah, so if you hold down brake and accelerate at the same time, and then let go of brake, you'll get a bit of a burst off the line. But apparently, with e-brake, you get that too, but you got to turn your wheels a bit to get that. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and try to pull this off all day, but I'm a little curious. Yeah, there we go. Interesting. I... Huh. I never knew that. So, yeah, so there's two types of... There's, there's a brake speed burst, which you can really only ever do from a standstill, and then there's an e-brake speed burst, which involves turning your wheels slightly while you're e-braking to get a burst. So I just did that at that little jump right there. I just did an e-brake speed burst. In theory, you're not really limited in the amount of speed bursts you can do. I mean, and even this driving route, I mean, this is what we figured to be the most optimal, but um, like to avoid that checkpoint there, I went over to the right and kind of went over like a little jump. The reason I do that, like the, the little jump, is because it makes it easier to get like an e-brake speed burst. So like when you're just like driving around like this, if you try to do an e-brake speed burst, you gotta kind of like twitch to the side and then pull back. And it, it's tough. It's a lot easier to do on dirt. Like I'm on dirt now, so it'll actually be a lot easier. Let's see if I can even get one. As I say that, of course, of course I can't get one. But um, on pavement, it's more it's more challenging. You you kind of have to flick the steering wheel to the left and then pull it back so that you end up going straight. And that gets you quite a bit of, of speed, but it's risky, of course, because if you fail to pull it off, then you've just slowed down the vehicle by e-braking. Um, and, uh, and yeah, but if you're in the air, if you get if you get air and you just kind of like hold the handbrake while you're in the air and turn the, turn the wheel while you're in midair, and then when you land, like, or, or before you land even, like set it all straight again, the game, what, what I think is happening is the game doesn't actually process that you're not on the ground. It just knows that you did this. So you, you've kind of like earned a speed burst, basically. Like you were, doing, you were doing handbrake, turning, and throttle all at the same time. So you got a, you got a, a speed burst kind of stored. And the reason I, I know the game stores speed bursts is because you can actually get a speed burst, get out of the vehicle, come back into it, and then whenever you press like accelerate, you'll you can you can get a speed burst that like you got from the last time you were in the vehicle without actually using the handbrake or anything. And the reason I'm covering speed burst so much, you don't really drive that much in this category, but you drive more now because of the new route than we did before. So it actually is kind of important. I mean, if runs get extremely optimal, um, if runs get extremely optimal, then yeah, like the difference might come down to who's the better driver. So yeah, here you just go and accept the contract. The optimal route here is, first of all, you want to kill some of these allies to try to lower the mood as much as possible. I'm not even going to explain why. It just trust me on this. It'll come into play later. So if you can manage... So I got one of them there. And so you saw that my mood with the allies dropped a little bit. The thing is, is we need to get their mood neutral by a certain point of the run. And it's free to get their mood down a little bit there. All right, so this is the fastest way to do this contract, what I just did there. And I'll, I'll talk through this in a second, but let me just execute. And then, yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll talk I'll talk through it now, because all I'm gonna all I'm gonna do at this point is go over there and verify them. So this is the fastest way to do it that we're aware of at the moment. And this was just found like a week or two ago. So basically you wanna run out there, kill a couple allies, get into the Humvee that's parked, walk to it, don't jump over the retaining wall, because when you jump, your character see that how there's like a half second when you like pause to regain your footing um so even though it's a more direct pathing to hop over the retaining wall of the humvee it ends up being faster to just walk around it then when you round this turn here that's when you want to do a speed burst and the reason for doing it there it's not like it, it doesn't need to be there i mean you could do it up here you could probably even do it a little further back the reason that's i think the best spot to do it is when you do a speed burst you have to turn like that's the whole thing is like turning so it's easiest to do to turn and do a speed burst when you're already turning. So when you're like making this corner here, that's a great opportunity to get a speed burst started. So um, so yeah, you wanna you wanna do like a you wanna do a brake speed burst when you get in the car. Then you wanna do a handbrake speed burst around this corner, and that'll give you enough speed to actually make it up this front hill. Uh, it. It's actually pretty easy. I mean, I know I'm going to say that people might try this and be like, what the hell is this hard? But, like, trust me, you know, other runners have done this. And, like, 
we tried to get this for so long, this front hill climb, and we could never figure it out. And it turns out it was actually like we were overthinking it. You just need you just need a decent bit of speed. And there's a line in the. Let's see if I can can I see it down there? The nice thing is I can actually record, and then I can go into my. So there's a little black line. Yeah, right there. And I can actually highlight this with my mouse too. <clears throat> So right there, this this is what I'm aiming for. As long as you're near this black line, for me, this is what I target. Honestly, you could probably come up with your own target point. Uh, and then what you want to do, actually, is when you come up here, counterintuitively, I, I've found that it helps to, at this point, start uh, start turning left, actually. Start, tr start trying to drive toward the fence over here. So don't, don't, don't fight the hill, ride with the hill, aim for the fence, and then when you get close to the top, you're going to kind of apply the e-brake and snap the wheels back in the other direction, and that should give you, you'll see here, I got a speed burst, so that should give you a nice speed burst, so I'm going really slow, but boom, speed burst, and I'm over the hill. And the nice thing about that is, obviously, speed is nice, of course, um, but the other thing that's nice about that is it allows me to do what we call a quick exit. So because I'm going at a certain speed, the game doesn't do the typical animation where you like open the door and walk out of the vehicle. It literally just teleports you from in the vehicle to out of the vehicle, which saves a considerable amount of time. Um, quick exits are always great when possible. So there are two ways to get quick exits. If you're in a ground vehicle, like I said, you can just be going fast enough. Uh, that doesn't work in helicopters. You can't <laughs> jump out. Unfortunately, you can't jump out of a helicopter mid-flight. Wish you could. That would actually be fun and cool. The other way you can get a quick exit in any vehicle is if something is blocking your exit from the vehicle. So, like, if I had gotten out, let's just say, I don't know if this is actually, why is this being so weird? There we go. Like, let's say I'd gotten out, like, eh, this probably wouldn't have worked because I'm at an angle. But let's say I got out, like, right when I was against the fence here. The game would say, okay, uh, the animation is blocked on this side because there's, like, a physical object in the way. So, instead, we're going to teleport the the player out of the vehicle well we're gonna do it just wherever we can oh and then the other thing so once you hop out here uh, i like to kill this guy you don't need to the important part is you want to stop and shoot this guy and the reason you want to stop it i mean you can you can run and shoot him but the problem with running and shooting him is you're probably not going to get a headshot on your first hit so you're probably going to body shot him and if you body shot him he's going to run away and as soon as he starts running he's now a moving target and he's going to be quite difficult to hit from this range so it, I, I think it's optimal to just stop for like a nanosecond, you know, line, so basically what I do, so I come up here, I spray this guy, then I line up my cursor and stop, shoot, and then start walking again. Here, I'll, I'll show you on this guy, so like kind of run and like that, right? So you're not really wasting that much time standing still, um, and that's how I make sure I get him, you know, dead as quickly as possible. You want to kill him before you cross... Roughly this line, I would say, this is where the, there's a cutscene that'll cut in. If, he, if he's still alive by the time you walk to like this point, the game will break to a cutscene and you'll lose a bunch of time. So that's no bueno. Uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much this route. I'm going to now do the, the much safer route. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be showcasing some different alternate routes for, for beginners. Because I do want this to be a way for beginners to approach... Um, you know, speedrunning mercenaries in general. So let's go ahead and restart the contract, and we'll do the, the much safer route, which Banter used today to get a world record. So, so what you're going to do, instead of walking straight ahead here, you're actually going to run backwards, and you're going to hop over this retaining wall, or whatever it is, and you're going to switch to... Or no, you're actually... I was going to say switch to stun grenades, but that's a pacifist strat. So you're going to get into this. You're going to use a brake, brake speed burst. I guess I'll just call it a brake burst. And a handbrake burst will be the other one. Drive past here. No need to get fancy with speed burst. Just round the corner there. You can get really close to those trees. And you want to kind of dip wide there and then slide up this hill. See, I didn't even get it. But the reason the reason you want to kind of hang wide there is you can use the momentum of this slope to get you a little bit further up this hill. And then you can get a quick exit, like I was talking about before. If you if you have enough speed, you'll get a quick exit. I had slightly a little too little, like I had I didn't have enough speed there, so I actually did the animation to get out of the vehicle. Then when you run up here, you're gonna kind of stop here, shoot him, and now that he's dead, you're gonna run forward. If you get to this spot, 
then the cutscene will come in, like right around here-ish. So you gotta you gotta hang back a little bit to shoot him. All right. So at this point now, both of the runs are the same. Both of the strats are the same. And, and that strat, by the way, that saves roughly four seconds. So a lot of these like risky strats, if you're a beginner to the run, I, I, I mean, it's up to you. I wouldn't even really bother with them though. I mean, I, I very much am of the philosophy that if you're if you're serious about running the game, there's no point in practicing the slow strats. You know, just take your time and learn learn the fast ones. But like, if you want to kind of just do this for fun and you want to put a decent time up and and you know just see what you can do, I wouldn't even bother. Like, you're gonna end up bashing your head against the wall trying to figure out how to do a speed burst, which by the way is one of the hardest things to do in the game in order to get up this hill. To say four seconds, maybe, right? So you can just drive around, and I know this looks a lot slower, but it's not. All right, so we're gonna get another uh, major glitch that we use in this game, and this is called verification skips. Um, I mean, there's a ton of tricks that we just call animation skips, but uh, they're all different in their own ways. But the, the basic idea of an animation skip is that we're gonna we're gonna initiate a conflicting animation to make the game prioritize it over the comparably longer animation. So, for example, I'm gonna for this one, what you want to do is you're gonna throw a grenade. So you you can you prime a grenade by holding down the trigger, then you're gonna press Y while you're priming the grenade. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to re-prime. It's, it's a bit of a glitch. I mean, it's going to re-prime the grenade. It's not going to throw the one you just primed. So you can actually, you can prime it from like a while away. Like just because you primed it for a while like this, that doesn't mean it's going to like go off right in your hand when you eventually verify the guy. You can actually hear the click of the second priming going on when you press the verification button. So yeah, it, it's really simple. You just hold down left trigger to, to prime a grenade, and then while you're doing that, you press Y to uh, to verify the target. And that'll skip the animation where typically like the, the mercenary takes out like a camera and takes a picture of the guy, and it takes quite a few seconds. So it skips all that. All right, so once he's dead, you're going to just make a break for, for this corner over here. And while you're over here, at any point, at any point, I like to do it right here because this is a bit of a tricky corner to round. There's actually not much room. Um, and it's pretty easy to slide down this hill on accident. Uh, you can also go around here if you want. Some people do do that. But I find that, honestly, it's not that much easier. And it's a little clunky because you have to go, like, left and then right and then left. You have to zigzag. Whereas, like, this one's a, a bit more of a fluid, like, it's more of a racing line, you know? Um, so, yeah, right around this corner, I, I do what you need to do next, which is take out C4. We're not going to use C4. But the reason you're going to take it out is because, let me show you. They give you some surgical strikes here that we're going to use to blow up these artillery guns. And if you equip a surgical strike, you do an animation to take it out, right? Well, that animation wastes time that we could be using to destroy the, to destroy the artillery guns. But they don't give you the surgical strike right away. There's like a bunch of dialogue. So actually, you're going to be running from this guy over here, and you're going to make it here... And you're going to be sitting here actually for a second or two before the dialogue ends and they actually give you the surgical strikes. So while you're waiting, basically, you can get the animation out of the way. And then once they give you the surgical strike, boom, it's it's just a quick one, two. So it's, it's you know, it's up a right trigger to target. And then this is this one's pretty easy. I like to aim a little bit to the right here because I find that this artillery typically like misses left see that see how yeah perfect but it, i like that it played along because it's definitely random like i could have said oh it usually misses left and then it could have just gone way right there um <laughs> this is definitely where runs die sometimes and this this comes down to the nerve of the player so like obviously the surgical strike like in theory you could just go you know blip you, you could just go like this and then stop aiming right and like he'll fire his bombs let's see where he fires them but yeah, you see how far to the left that was? Like, there's no way that that would have blown up the right gun. So there's a bit of, like, nerve to how quickly you want to run away from this to, you know, rely on luck. But if you want to just be, like, super sure that it's going to hit, just wait until it gets real small. Like, basically once it's down to, like, here, then you're good. You're good. You don't need to wait for it to, like, beep or anything. At that point, it'll be good. Um, I will say, if you let it go too quickly, so these will actually, I'll show you here. So after after you blow it up, you're going to run down the hill and then jump over the edge. And that'll basically, what that'll do, because if you just slide down the hill, it actually takes a while to slide down. 
what that'll do is you'll go into an animation where your character's kind of recoiling from the damage, but they're doing that while they're, at, while they're sliding down the hill, so it doesn't waste any time. Um, that was actually a bit of an aggressive jump. Jump. I didn't really mean to lose that much health, but um, but yeah, that's the basic idea. Is kind of fall down the hill a little bit and then do a do a big jump. But if you do this too quickly, like let's say you do just like call in surgical strike and just immediately turn around and run. The problem with that is if you get too far over here, you will actually despawn. You you will despawn that their artillery guns. You get you'll you'll be too far away from them. So it looks like they're still here. Although I think this is just because they're destroyed. Let me see if I can get them to disappear. At this point, normally at this distance, they would be despawned. It's actually really interesting to me that the game is retaining them as, like, destroyed pieces. But it doesn't retain them when they're actually, like, the objective. Um, that's odd. But just take my word for it that, like, if you're, like, right about here... If you're right about here, those will actually despawn. So, like, even if your missiles hit exactly where they're supposed to... Uh, it won't do anything. And not only will they, they despawn, but they'll get full health back, too. So, like, let's say you, you destroyed one, but the rocket was close enough to the second one to catch it on fire, but not fully destroy it. It could be just about to blow up, but if you run out of the, the despawn zone, it'll it'll deallocate, and then when you come back, you'll have to just totally restart. It'll be at 100% health again. So, anyway. That's pretty much that. That was... Uh, longer than I expected to spend on anti-up, but uh, it's a pretty action-packed contract, all things considered. So this this one, this strat's a little bit controversial. I am convinced that the fastest way to get to this guard is to run over here and then jump, because weirdly, did you see that? I didn't get an animation for falling from my jump. So like if I jump here, see that how there's a bit of like a... Let me see if I can actually show that running. See that how it pauses for a second before I can keep running? For some reason here, I don't know if it's because of the slope or what, but if you jump perfectly on these steps, you don't actually recoil. So I think that it's faster to run over here, take the less optimal line, jump, and then have no recoil, than it is to instead take the optimal line of going right for him, but then you have to jump and recoil, right? So this is like minutia, but this is the kind of stuff I want to get into because I know it's going to be interesting to at least some of the active runners, uh, it might be boring for newcomers, but, you know, you can always skip ahead. So, yeah, that's anti up. <clears throat> and I'll try to, like, bookmark this, like, put chapters in so people can skip around on YouTube. All right, so what you're going to... The, the general goal... This is a bit of a free-form moment. So, I actually got an amazing spawn. So, there's a AT missile guy right there. And I need AT missiles. Uh, that is a... Think, yeah, that is a requirement of the run. You don't necessarily need them right now. You could, in theory, get them when you come back to the A and HQ later in the run. So this is a bit of a difference from the, er the earlier routes um, from before this new trick was discovered. Before, if you did not... So the, the, where this guy spawns, or if... What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is the game will spawn just a variety of allied soldiers around the HQ. It can spawn upwards of two, I think. I've never seen three. Upwards of two AT missile soldiers. Or it could spawn none. And before, if it spawned none, that was the end of the run. You had to restart, basically. I mean, the other thing you can do, you could always, like... You, if you don't get any AT missile guys, what you could do is you can save, in case you're, like, trying to just, like, get a hang of the run. You can save and then load, and you'll spawn back at the Allied HQ, and you can, there, oh, so look at this, wow, so here we go, so I actually got two AT missile guys this time, really good, really good RNG. So yeah, the general goal here is try to find the closest AT missile guy you can to a Humvee. So it does not need to be this Humvee, it doesn't need to be that Humvee, it could be a Humvee that's driving around on the road. In this particular situation, the, the optimal route would be kill him, take this, and then probably run over here. But, you could also go risky and say, well, instead of running back there, I'm going to check back here because this is the direction we want to go in. Maybe there's a Humvee driving by. Well, nope, no dice. I got unlucky. There's this guy, but um, I'm going to have to like basically pull a U-turn here. And by the way, another good another good free opportunity to get some reputation loss, right? Because we want to get the allies down to neutral eventually. So is that another AT missile guy? Oh, no, it's not. So you can tell the AT missile guys apart from a long distance because they have these big, chunky backpacks. And they also hold their shoulders a little bit differently. Like, the way they're walking is a little bit differently. So, yeah, get any Humvee. It doesn't matter. And what we're going to do is drive this way. Now, I'm not 100% uh, convinced that this is the most optimal route. But at the moment, this is this is what we've got. We, we need to get all of the club's number cards. Or all but one of them. 
and I think the best opportunity we have to get this guy is right after Antioch. So we're just gonna we're just gonna drive up this hill. Uh, I don't even do speed bursts up this hill. It, it probably again this would be something that would really separate the boys from the men. I mean, if you could get some consistent speed bursts going up this hill, then you know kudos. But uh, but yeah, so we're just gonna drive up here. Ideally, you would have your M4 equipped. I think I have my anti tank missiles equipped right now, which is not great, and you'll see why here in a second. So you're just going to drive up here. You're going to just pray that the RPG guy doesn't hit you. I mean, that's really all I can say. Oh, I do have the M4 equipped. Okay, we're going to get him, and we're going to do another animation skip. I like to use frags here because the um, you can use stuns or frags for any of these. But I, if there's a risk of getting hit by my own grenade, then I prefer frags, assuming I don't have, like, a wimpy vehicle. By the way, another strat that was considered was hijacking... Uh, these one of these Blackhawks to fly up to this number card instead of taking a, a Humvee. And I think it's possible that you could get fast enough with that where it might save a second or two, but I, I don't know, honestly. Like, the Humvee, when I was testing it, the best I could do was get within, like, eight seconds of the Humvee, so really not great at all. All right, so we're going to steal this. <laughs> um, and you actually want to have stuns equipped, just because uh, you're going to use them later. So we're going to take this. And what you what you want to do, basically, is there's a kind of a... You're going to kind of thread the needle here with the mountains. So down... Let me zoom in here. All right. Where's my mouse? I cannot see. Oh, there it is. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is basically fly... Um, hold on. How do I go back? There we go. You're going to fly from here down to, like, oops, sorry. You're going to fly from here down to, like, here-ish. This is where the 10 is. This is the next number card we're going for, the 10 of clubs. So the, the direct path is, like, through this area, and there are a few SAM turrets that can be problematic if you don't fly the optimal route. So... Basically, you want to point... I'm, I think I'm pointing in pretty much the perfect direction here, so I'm just going to fly straight and see if I'm right. I'm still getting a hang of this route myself, so... I um, mean, it, it can be tricky. I mean, there's grids. If you notice, there's actually, like, grid markers on the map, and you can use those to, to kind of make sure that your your little, your little like, position indicator uh, is in the right spot to, like, pull off different routes. So, yeah, that was, that was pretty much perfect. So, basically, I'm flying right over this guy. You can shoot him. Oops. I totally missed. But you don't really need to. If you notice, he didn't actually fire at me. This is the guy you do need to shoot, though. That guy right there. Because that guy, even though he misses, and he'll pretty much always miss if you fly over him the way I did, um, note that if you get too close, he might hit you just on sheer dumb luck. And if you are too high, then what that'll actually do is it'll allow the, um, the SAM missile to... Believe it or not, loop back and, and follow you. So they have they have pretty aggressive tracking. Um, so there, there's kind of an optimal distance to fly over him where he'll just fire and just completely miss every time. But even though he will miss every time, you still need to blow him up because you're, we're basically going to land right here, and he he still has he still has eyes on you here. So um, so this is the optimal strat is to like kind of land like this and verify him. But for new runners, I would recommend just landing over here. All right, so now we're going to fly to the, I believe it's the 7th. You know, crazily enough, no matter how many times I play this game, and by the way, I aim for these kind of two mountains here, these guys, these guys this is kind of where I, I position my helicopter, because what we're going to do is we're going to fly around this ridge, and then we're going to duck down real quick, and we're going to kill, we need to kill everyone here, because there are three RPG enemies, and they will mess you up. But yeah, and then after this, we're just going to South Korea. So you can see the South Korea flag on the map, and we're just going to go over there. And then, yeah, we're going to start... Our first South Korean contract, Stem the Tide. This is probably the most... This is one of the highest skill cap uh, contracts. It's probably the highest skill cap contract in the entire game as far as like speedrunning is concerned. So there's a bit of... A few things we're going to do here. We're going to blow this up. This is not totally necessary, but it prevents... If you end up accidentally getting like a North Korean disguise in this helicopter, it prevents them from shooting tow missiles at you. So then we're gonna we're gonna park over here and we're gonna throw frags at these turrets. You don't really need to do that. The reason why that's nice to do is because it prevents some pop-ups, which I'll show you later what the pop-ups are that we avoided there. So then so you're gonna fly out and kill that guy. I was actually a little slow there because I was talking. 
But then, so as soon as you kill that guy, you want to kind of, you want to fly up real high here. Because what that'll do is it'll allow you to actually spawn kill. See how they pop in? Like, they totally just spawn in. If you can shoot where they spawn... Like, if you can shoot at their spawn point before they even spawn in, you have a way better chance of getting a quick kill on them. As soon as they become a moving target, it, it becomes much more difficult. Um, and just to explain some mechanics here, all you need to do to advance this contract is kill the driver of the attacking, of, of some of the attacking vehicles. You do not need to go for these transport trucks. You do not need to go for any of the ground troops. You do not need to go for the vehicles themselves. They don't need to be blown up. You don't need to go for the gunners of the vehicles. You just need to go for the drivers. Uh, and that even means you don't even need to kill them. So actually what the South Koreans just... And that was the pop-up I was referring to. So the South Koreans actually just flipped over that jeep there. And the driver got out. That also counts, right? So as long as the driver is just not in the vehicle anymore, the game advances to the next round. All right, let's clear this up and move on. All right, so next round is going to be two jeeps. And then... Because my morale, you can see my morale is only at like the halfway point. Because it's only at the halfway point, I'm actually going to get another jeep spawn here. You see that how one jeep spawned in? Otherwise, that would have been an armored vehicle that I would have had to shoot a missile. Well, you don't have to shoot a missile at it. But let me get, hold on, let me get my mood up here a little bit. The South Koreans like it when you blow up these vehicles. So I'm going to try to boost their mood here a little bit to show you. Eh, I, might not, I might not be able to get it up high enough. But yeah, the, what typically happens is... Um, the game will spawn in some armored uh, troop transports. And you can destroy those. You can, like, kill the gunner with a, your minigun on those. It's, it's, totally, po it's totally possible. Um, and it is actually the optimal strat. But it's so much easier and more consistent to just use 18 missiles. And it, does, it barely wastes any time to do that. So, um, so, yeah, I'll show you here. So, once you kill all those guys, then I... Um, and I see that armored vehicle will spawn in because I got the morale up high enough. It's right around, I think, three quarters where the morale, where it's like, if you're at like 75% morale, that's about where it decides like whether it's going to send you a Jeep or an armored vehicle. And then, yeah, just fly back here and you're going to get three more. I like to really stick my nose out here and go really go for these because we're going to just fly to the mafia after this. All right, and that's that. Now we can just leave. There used to be a thing where we kind of needed to stay in Kaesong for a little while. Um for reasons that I'm not even going to bother explaining because it's not applicable to any percent anymore. Uh, if you have questions about anything, I mean, feel free to join the Discord and just DM me or, you know, tag me or ping me or whatever. I don't, I don't mind if people ping me. So, so we're going to fly over here. We're going to get the, this guy because he's, like, right on the way to the Mafia. Oh, that's a frag. Okay. So, <laughs> so I had frags out unwittingly. I had frags out because of the last contract. Um, and... Uh, I forgot to switch back to my stun, so I actually just did an animation skip using a frag, and because I'm in a scout helicopter here, that's really going to mess up my... Let's see if that... That might even blow it up. Let's see. Oh, I actually did. It actually didn't do that much damage, so that was okay. All right, let's see what ends up happening here. I am curious. Do I need to explain? Yeah, there, there we go. So you see how Fiona is saying, nicely done, the, you know, the, whatever. Here, I'm going to get out here and do it. Oh, can I do it? Oh, I can't do it. Damn. So I haven't actually, I haven't actually run any percent yet. Uh, so I haven't gotten the timing of this totally down. I guess I will explain some of the meta with that last contract. So after you eliminate the final wave and, and uh, the South Korean officer says, um, here comes the cavalry, right? Like you've completed the final objective. If you leave Kaesong too quickly, and, I'm, and I, it really is a matter of like a second or two, if you leave Kaesong too quickly, the game, what, what seems to be happening is that the game will essentially just fall back to a, a timer. It'll just put you on a timer and the contract will finish when the timer finishes. On the flip side, if you stay in the city long enough for the, the actual cavalry, which is a pair of Blackhawks, if you stay in the city long enough for those Blackhawks to spawn in, then the... I think it is still actually on a timer, but for some reason the timer is, like, much less. Like, like the end, that, that dialogue where Fiona's like, nicely done, South Korean reinforcements have arrived. That'll occur much sooner. I mean, we're talking, I think, 30 seconds to a minute sooner. And it used to be a big thing in any percent runs that you needed to, like, hang back a little bit in the city to make sure that you got the faster dialogue. However... Now that we're actually verifying a card on the way to the Mafia HQ, 
uh, I don't think it's a factor anymore. It, not only is it not a factor, but it's probably actually optimal to get the longer dialogue. But I, I need to play around with it a bit. I haven't, unfortunately, I didn't <laughs> prep for this tutorial enough, apparently. But the optimal scenario is that you would be landing right when she says that, because then when you get out of the vehicle, you can do something that's called a, um, a payment screen skip. You might not actually be able to do a payment screen skip, because there might not be a fade out since we killed the number card. But yeah, basically at the end of contracts, typically at the end of contracts, the game will do a fade out, like a slow cinematic fade out, and it'll slow motion you and everything, and then it'll show you a payment screen, and then you'll go on with your merge. Well, if you, if, if the fade out starts, and in the middle of it, you do an animation, like switching your weapon or, or getting out of your vehicle, for example, you can then access this support menu, this like quick support menu, which you can access by pressing the up or the down, or yeah, the up or the down button on the D-pad. If you do that, you will break the fade out sequence. The fade out will end and there will be no payment screen. You will still get paid for the contract and you'll get like the mood boost and everything, but you will skip the screen where you get paid, which saves a lot of time. So yeah, in a perfect world, you would skip the payment screen and then go to the mafia here. Um, I wish I had a better idea of exactly how that plays out in like actual optimal runs, but at the moment I, I just don't. So maybe I can come back and fill in the gap there later. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to run over here. As we're running, we're going to kill this officer. So it's going to look like this. We're going to kill the officer. We're going to switch to our AT missiles. We're going to shoot an AT missile at the garage. Then we're going to throw a frag at the garage. And then we're going to throw a frag at our helicopter because we want to destroy the garage and our helicopter. So the helicopter's on really low health, which is perfect. Now we're going to switch to our AT missiles. We're going to fly into this hangar and to the right here. We're going to fire a missile and blow up the helicopter, which it almost worked perfectly there. I wish that for the sake of the demonstration. What that's gonna do is it's actually gonna push the debris of the helicopter, it's gonna push you way over here, and you can actually get it to where you just effectively teleport to the side of this truck, so you can just get right in. And that prevents you from having to like land and do the animation of getting out of the helicopter and everything like that, but this is all minor optimizations. I mean, if you're a new runner, you can just, um, ooh, and I wanna explain this too. If you're a new runner, you can just, um, you could just, like, park and get out. I mean, it's not really a big time loss. Okay, so I'm driving very specifically here to avoid a pop-up. If, if I drive over here, see that? I get a pop-up. If I, if I get too close to that turret, I get a pop-up. So if you kind of hang really far to the left there, you can avoid that pop-up, which saves probably a second. All right, now we're just going to drive back to the garage. There's a bit of a tricky mechanic here, uh, and you probably want to honk your horn so these guys don't shoot at you. So to drive into this garage optimally... You do a bit of a drift, uh, which in a vehicle like this is, is can be tricky. But I like to take basically a wide berth, and then I go I go on the, I go off the throttle and on the handbrake, and then I go back on the throttle, and that gives me a, a good angle to get back in. And then what we're gonna do is just shoot a missile at the garage and blow it up. So what we just did is called a contract warp, first of many in in this run. The way a contract warp works is what you need to do is complete the final objective for a contract. Then, during that fade-out, that was the cinematic fade-out that I was referencing earlier. During that cinematic fade-out, before the game shows you a payment screen, you want to do something to fail the contract. It doesn't matter what you do to fail it, you just have to fail it. Uh, failure methods can include turning the faction you're working for hostile, destroying something that is mission critical, so in this case I destroyed the garage that I was supposed to deliver the truck in, right? So that fails the contract. In theory, if I could have destroyed the truck, although the truck I think is despawned at this point, in theory that would probably fail the contract. Destroying the HQ fails the contract. Um, and I think that's it for this one. You, you can't actually turn the Mafia hostile in this contract because at this point in the game, the game has some kind of a guardrails where it doesn't actually let hostiles turn faction against you until you've finished the first mission for China. So at the moment, the only ways you could fail this contract is by blowing up the HQ or the garage, but the garage is way easier because you end up spawning right next to it. So now the game is like, okay, the game is confused, basically. In the code, the game has already incremented the mission you're on in the particular sequence for the faction that you're dealing with. And it's separated by province, so we're in, the, we're in the southwest province of the game right now. So currently, the game has already incremented that we've gone from southwest Mafia 1 
to Southwest Mafia 2. However, the game has also recognized that you just failed the contract. So it's given you a retry prompt, and, it's gonna, and if you retry, it's going to execute a series of functions that's going to put you into the current... It's going to put you at the beginning of the current contract you're doing for the faction that you're in sequence with, right? Well, since it already incremented the contract because I finished the final objective, when I hit retry here, it's going to put me at the start of the next contract for that faction sequence, which, I, which is give me my money. And on top of that, remember that helicopter we crash landed earlier? Hey, look at that. It's back, right? Because it thinks we retried the contract, so it tries to reset everything, including the stored vehicle we had. All right, so what I like to do here is fly generally between these two trees, and then to pick up this box optimally. Obviously, if you want to just like take your time with this, this is something for beginners where just you know you can just get a feel for it. What I do though is I actually turn. How do I do this? So I normally how you hold a controller, your hands are under the two um, handles basically. What I do here is I actually put my right hand on top of the controller. So I have my index finger on the analog stick to turn. And then I have my middle finger on X to descend, right? And then I have my, so I'm, I'm kind of coming in and I'm descending and then I use my index finger to drop the winch, pick it up and then I use my, my middle finger to, uh, to press A to ascend and fly away. And that is what I've found. Now my hands are back on the controller as usual. That's what I found to be the fastest method uh, for picking this box up. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate now what is actually the fastest way you can do this contract. Although I, I don't even do this because this is truly an <laughs> this is truly a, a, a radical strat. So there's something. Well, there's also something called the orbital fling, but we're not even going to get into that. This is I'm going to do I'm going to do a half court fling. So I've made some basketball analogies here. So uh, you basically once you pick up the crate, just fly as high as you can, and once you get over this little creek here. You're going to just let the winch go. And you're still ascending, by the way. All right, let's see if I can get this. I pr there's well, n almost no way that I got this first try. Let's see. Yeah, no, I totally missed. All right. Oh, oh, did I get it? Ooh, that was really close, actually. That was really close. I saw, I could see that it hit. It hit right here. So that, <laughs> that was actually super close. So the game, something interesting about this game is it, it does, when you fly away from things, it does deregister stuff. Like, for example, this building... Um, this building deregisters if you fly far enough away from it. So the, so the reason why this strat saves so much time is you can fling the box from like here and while the box is going to the objective, you're going to your next objective. So the game will despawn all of the buildings that are on the way to that final objective, but it, it will retain the box because it's mission critical, I, I think, I presume, that's why it retains it, and it will retain the target zone. So you can call in a surgical strike on it and you can actually launch it back to the delivery point doing a surgical strike. Uh, that is even more insane than a... Well, that just happened. <laughs> oh, that would have been a good opportunity actually to demonstrate uh, pause buffering. So I actually could have saved that if I if I was good enough. Um, I'll try to demonstrate it here, let me show you. All right, so I'm gonna pause, a pause, a pause. I'm trying to get like frames advancing here. Okay, right there. So I just landed and I didn't take any damage. So watch this, continue. Look at that, my health is still at 100. So there's, you can you can pause buffer the game in order to prevent taking damage, which is particularly useful if you're falling from a deadly height. Um, so I probably could have, I probably could have lived that, um, but uh, but yeah. So yeah, that's the orbital fling is calling a surgical strike. Half court fling is dropping it by the river, but what I'm gonna show you is the most popular strat, which is the three-point fling, which is a nice balance between being saving time, um, looking cool, and uh, being, like, you know, doable, like, you know, consistently doable. So to do that, to do a three-point fling, pick up the box, and you want to fly to roughly 155 meters. I don't think it's super precise. This is just what I do. You want to be at 155 meters right as you're passing over this monument. And, okay, so now I'm going to let go of A, and I'm just going to fly. I'm just going to fly toward the objective. I like to position the camera so that my tail wing is like on plane with my rotor. And oh, I'm actually flying the wrong direction here. We're gonna fly right when you see like ha like right about that amount of the thing. We're gonna let it rip. As long as it is at a reasonable height over the target zone and passes over it, 
it'll, it'll count. It doesn't actually need to like stay in the target zone. And yeah, that's pretty much that. What you're gonna do actually is not fly to China, my bad. You're gonna fly to this guy. So you can just land here. You're gonna get out. You're gonna walk up. You're gonna shoot him. You're gonna throw any grenade. It doesn't actually matter because it almost never ends up hitting you. And then you're gonna just run back over to your helicopter. And you can use your, your radar here to cheat to make sure you're running in the right direction. That's what I usually do. And yeah, that's pretty much that. That one's pretty easy. What I would say is I would start pre-firing like right when you're about here because it's it's actually pretty easy to get a headshot on him. And then yeah, after you verify him, then you're going to go to China. But yeah, the half-court fling, because of like where you drop off the box, it, it doesn't it doesn't save as much time as it used to when we, when we used to just like fly to China. Uh, this contract is very simple. We're just going to walk over to a helicopter fly up the hill, shoot the Children's Museum. What we're going to do is we're going to fire two missiles as we're flying in, and then we're going to pick up, because we only have, and it'll take three missiles. We're going to pick up ammo, we're going to fire again, and we're going to be out of here. <clears throat> oh, you know what? I forgot a detail earlier. I forgot to mention something. During Give Me My Money, that last Mafia contract, as you're jumping off the roof of the garage you should kill uh, the three mafia. I'll, I'll show you. I can, I can demonstrate real quick. But yeah, right now we're not doing anything fancy, just flying back. No, oh my god, I forgot again. This is hilarious. I mean, I don't know why I'm doing a tutorial and clearly I don't know the, the only, I don't even know the route. <laughs> uh, we're not flying back to the mafia. We're flying now to go get this number card over here. Um, there's nothing, I'm not, I'm not really gonna, like, it, it's, it's just a line. You just fly from here down here. There's there's no SAMs or anything. There's nothing fancy. You just gotta pick the optimal line and do it. And this guy's easy. I mean, all you need to do is shoot him, and then kind of land like this. And then, oops, don't throw don't throw a frag. <laughs> throw a stun grenade. But we should be okay, because there's really not too much else to do. And then we're gonna continue. And then there's one more number card. So all you need to do is just fly basically directly to the Mafia HQ. And there's one more number card on the way that we're going to get. So yeah, flying directly to the Mafia HQ flag has, has put me, I, yeah, exactly where I want to be pretty much. Which is right here. We're going to hop out and we're going to run over and shoot this guy. Ideally, you'd have a disguise here so he doesn't run away from you. But I haven't figured out uh, a way to consistently get that. Oh yeah, I guess this is a decent time to talk about intel. So you need 80 points of intel to go for an ace in this game, the ace contract. And uh, the number cards are worth what their number is. And then all of the face cards are worth 30 points. So all you need to do is get one face card and then eight of the available nine number cards. And the, But you the only possible number cards you can skip are the two, the three, or, or the four. If you skip the five, that's too many points lost. In this case, the four is probably the best candidate because the four is way over here in the Heiju farmlands area. So we, we just we just never go even remotely near that. Okay, yeah, so the Mafia is neutral with me right now, which is not, uh, not ideal. So what I should have done, and I'll do it now, I'll demonstrate what I should have done during Give Me My Money because the three guys will still be there. What I should have done is when I started this contract, I should have jumped over this and then gone one, two, three, and then got into my helicopter and then flown away because that is free. You know, free, when we talk about free in a speedrun, that just means it's something you can do without wasting any time. And it's also, and free can also be used to describe something that's really easy too. So that's a very easy way to get the mood exactly where you need it to be. Um, that doesn't waste time. So yeah, so their mood now is, their mood is exactly at the point where um, if I kill, and I'm going to make a, a safety save here in case I mess up this next trick. You can also do this, by the way, this is a great, if you're, if you're new to the run and you're learning it, save here. Just, just do it. Just save here. Because the next contract is the hardest thing in the entire run. It's one of the hardest things in Merc speedrunning, period. You will fail it. Um, <laughs> I can't even tell you how many times I used to fail it. It used to be Sometimes it would be a dozen times in my fail compilation how many times I would fail this in like a single attempt for a record. So yeah, save here because you can always retry. If you mess up the trick, you can always just load this up and like give it another go. But yeah, I'll demonstrate really quickly. 
what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a contract warp again in the next contract. And the way we're gonna do it is by turning them hostile. So I'm one kill of these guys. Let me show you. I'm one kill away. So I just turned them hostile, which I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that. I'm actually just gonna demonstrate that you can save and load here. If you save and load, what, you, what you're gonna do, cause you're gonna need a new helicopter, just walk out here, take out your AT missiles and start firing. The helicopters are already spawned in and they will start to come toward this area. I think typically, yeah, sometimes, this guy's always, this guy's like a guaranteed spawn over here to the right, but he's a little bit slower. Sometimes you can get lucky and you can get one that's a little more like in the ocean. But yeah, just start firing because these guys will come, it's called helo fishing, it's a strat where if there are any explosions, helicopters for some reason in this game are attracted to explosions. So they will, if, if they are in the vicinity of any explosion, whether it be a grenade, a stun grenade, a, a rocket, whatever, um, they will fly toward it. So basically what you can do is you can load your save, start firing some rockets, and then hijack a helicopter and, and basically pick up where you left off. All right, so pretty simple here. We're just gonna walk to our helicopter. And then we're gonna take a mafia guy with us because we wanna turn we wanna turn the mafia hostile during this contract fade out. And we're gonna do that by just bringing a mafia guy with us and then killing him. By the way, let me just check here real quick. Is there a better, because there's a guy right there, is he? I'm just wondering if these guys are... Normally, I, what I do is I fly over here and pick up one of these two. Uh, it doesn't really matter who you pick up. I actually slightly prefer the officer, but um, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, so you just pick up either of them. I think gosh, the problem with this guy is there's like a fence and a building in the way. I guess you could fly over here like this, land, get him, and then take off. That might actually be optimal. Um, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, just pick, just pick up a Mafia guy. Then you're gonna fly over to the jack. This, this, the the exact strat for this contract is a little bit in flux. I'll show you what I like to do. I like to come in, guns blazing. I fire at this guy. I fire at this guy. I kill a, four of the eight or five of the eight ground troops. And then I land. I land over here so that he kind of runs that way and he gets blocked lots of time by his own guy. Then he comes out. Boom. Nice. Subdue him. And then I call an expo to immediately before I clear out the rest of the troops. You want to clear out all the troops, and I'll show you why. So there's one, two, three, and that's all of them. So there's, there's eight guys that you need to clear out. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get back in our helicopter, and we're going to actually kill one of the gunners. The guy, ideally the guy on the left, <laughs> not the guy on the right. And you're going to park so that the guy, your passenger is, is generally facing toward this helicopter. Because... Basically, the idea is we're going to go pick up the number card. We're going to load him into the helicopter, and then we're going to turn around, step in directly into this guy's field of view, and then we're going to kill him. He needs to witness you killing him. I know that sounds weird, <laughs> but like if I'm standing here and I just shoot him in the back of the head, odds are the game is... Oh. There's somebody in that tank. Huh. But yeah, okay, that's a great, that was a great demonstration. I don't know where that guy came from. So this guy now is aggroed. He's in an aggroed state because there was combat going on. So in order to guarantee that he's in a, he's in a neutral state, you can get him back into your helicopter and then, and then get him back out again. And that'll make sure he's calm. Unfortunately, now he's kind of like facing the helicopter. So I'm going to actually, I think that's somewhat random. Let me see what happens here if I just keep doing this. I wonder if that's because of where I'm standing. Hold on. Oops, hold on. You want him to be facing, ideally, like, toward the helicopter. I mean, once you get good enough, you can finagle it where you can kind of make him face you um, by shooting him. What, what you can do is you can kind of body shot him to get him to, like, get angry and, like, start looking at you. Um, this is, yeah, he's not really cooperating. It's kind of random the way they look. I mean, typically, I don't really have an issue with it when I do it first try. But now when I'm, like, of course, when I'm trying to, like, get it for the demonstration, now I'm struggling. Let's see if I park here, if it's any better. Okay, that's good. That's a good enough angle. You just want to make it so that you there's a clear line of sight between him and you. If the helicopter's in the way, like if he's facing this way, like there's not really a good line of sight between him and you to get the kill. Um, so, But it doesn't really matter exactly which way he's facing. You just want to make sure that he has an unobstructed view of you, essentially. Let me see if there's anything else I should cover here. Because this is definitely where people are going to struggle, so I want to make sure I don't leave anything out. Um, yeah, the reason you want to kill this gunner particularly is that he can see through buildings. So there actually is an enemy over there. Let's see if I can 
I don't want to, I don't really want to get him into, uh, maybe that's who got in the tank. Well, there should be, oh, there he is. Yeah. There should be two of them. So now he's aggroed again. See how he's running around. So let me get him back in the helicopter. Those guys, if you're a beginner, it's not a bad idea to just go ahead and kill those two guys. So instead of killing eight guys, you're killing, you're killing 10. Uh, but if you're going fast enough, you don't need to worry about them. And, and that goes for a lot of things in this game. If you're going fast enough, it actually makes it easier. Um, there's just fewer things, fewer variables you need to, excuse me, consider. So, um, but yeah, so those two guys over there, if you're going fast, like, you're not going to kill them and they're going to be alive. And this gunner can see through the building, see them, and will try to kill them through the building. He'll just spray at the wall. Um, and because he's shooting, that'll make this guy aggroed. And... The other thing that can happen is this gunner can actually see people out on the road. Like if like a, a North Korean Jeep passes by, he'll try to shoot at him, and that can also aggro this guy. But as long as you kill this gunner, it'll actually piss off that gunner. And that gunner, because you're closer to him than the targets on the road, he'll actually be trying to target you. So he'll be like in the gunner seat, turned really far to the left, trying to shoot you, but he won't be able to, so he just won't be shooting. And therefore, he won't aggro this guy. So that's why I like to kill this gunner on the left. That being said, ultimately it's a safety strat. You could probably just not if you didn't want to. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much that. So now we're, what we're going to do, once we, got, once we got this guy in position, we're going to run over here and we're going to do an animation skip to pick up this captive. And by the way, the reason we're capturing this guy instead of killing him is because to the best of our knowledge, the game... The problem is this isn't 100% consistent, but it's like 90 to 95% consistent. The game does not do the cinematic contract fade out if you have killed and verified any number cards during the contract or any sorry any any deck of 52 members at all during the contract including face cards because of that what that means is if you don't have a fade out there's not really any way to fail and succeed the contract at the same time there's not a way to do a contract warp if we don't have a fade out so we need a fade out so the way to consistently get a fade out is to capture this guy. So in order to pick him up and skip the animation, typically when you when you pick up these guys, it does this long animation. Boring. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to face in any direction other than straight. If you're facing straight like this, it won't work. And we're going to crouch. If you're like this, see how fast that is? It doesn't work. Uh, what we're going to do is instead face a direction like this, and then there's, see how there's a bit of like a turning there? There's actually like two animations going on. So we're gonna face, it, does, it doesn't need to be perfect. Like you can be kind of facing like this way and we're gonna crouch and then very quickly press Y. It's gonna be like crouch Y. And boom, you just skip the animation to pick up the guy. So that can be very useful just to save a little bit of time. And then we're gonna do another fun trick here. What you're gonna do now is press the right arrow on the D-pad to open the Merchant of Menace. You're gonna select anything, which the fastest thing is to just mash A. So A, A, A. Take out an item, A. Oh, well, sorry, not A. <laughs> That's a good demonstration of what you don't want to do. Hold on. Um, so you're going to do A, A, A. And then you're going to press actually start here. Start will start will get you out of this screen. Oh, and by the way, this is kind of a fun thing. You can be in a state here with no weapons, which is kind of kind of a cool thing. And you can, like, jump. You can crouch very awkwardly. Very awkwardly. <laughs> um, and, yeah, it's just kind of a fun little glitch. But yeah, so it's it's right A A A start, and now now you can actually run with the number card instead of doing like a really slow walk with them. Um, something to keep in mind though is that you do not actually have your M4 equipped anymore. You have this laser equipped. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna load this guy into the helicopter, then we're gonna swap from our beacon to our M4, and then we're gonna shoot this guy and kill him. And what I like to do is do it, like, ideally start with body shots and just let kind of the recoil carry upward into a headshot. Because if you just immediately headshot this guy, the game is weird. Like, inside, <laughs> literally what I think is happening is that the bullets themselves have collision, and the NPCs have cones of vision, and I actually think that the bullet can block their cone of vision and prevent them from witnessing you but if you've already shot them in the body then i think their resulting death whether or not the actual bullet that kills them was like whether that was witnessed the 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 npc is already like the last aggression against him was from you 
So if they die, the game attributes that death to you. Uh, that's how I think it works anyway. We don't really know. Also worth mentioning, the reason you don't want him aggroed, for one, you just don't want him running around. But the other reason is that the game seems to be pretty generous. If there's like a firefight going on, and you like, like let's say there's an allied and a North Korean guy shooting each other, and like in the middle of the firefight, you just like shoot the allied guy. The game's, I think, intentionally generous with like not charging you for that, like not saying that you killed the allied guy. Basically, it, it forgives friendly fire. I think the game is assuming that if you're in the middle of a firefight, you might accidentally kill some of your friendly soldiers, and they didn't want to really punish you for, for those. So that's why we want to make sure everything's calm and hunky-dory before we do this, so that he he's not like in a firefight, basically. All right, and then there's one more skip here. This one's really hard. I'm actually probably not going to be able to get it. I get this maybe 25% of the time. Again, if you are facing not straight ahead, but like a different direction, and you crouch and press Y, like, this one's frame perfect. You have to crouch, and then on the literal next frame, you have to press Y. If you can do that, then you'll skip the animation to load this guy into the helicopter. Let's see if I can pull it off. No, I didn't. See, I didn't get it. I mean, it's really tough. And I'm going to switch weapons. I'm going to kind of just spray this guy. i got plenty of time. And boom. So now the Russians are hostile. We've failed the contract, but we succeeded in the final objective. So now the game thinks we are in Southwest Province Mafia Contract Number 4. So it's actually going to take us from clubs all the way into diamonds. We, we will skip the ace contract and all of the other faction contracts, and we're just going to jump into the next chapter of the game when I, as soon as I hit yes here. So yeah, now we're in playing the odds, which is the next Mafia contract. Uh, but we're not actually going to do it. We're not going to do any contracts in Diamond because we're too, we, we're too busy for that. We don't, we, don't, we don't have time for that. So what you're going to do here is um, you're going to run backwards. Normally, we run around this side of the HQ um, for contracts for various reasons. But this is actually, I timed it, and it's within a second of each other. I think this is slightly slower, but we need to pick up a blueprint. Um, and I'll show you why. So we're going to run this way. So we're going to run this way. We're actually going to kill this guy, get him out of our way. And then we're going to pick up this. See that? So this, this unlocks the demolition supply drop. Now, it's not optimal that this causes a pop-up, and it is possible that there might be a more optimal time to pick up this blueprint um, where we would prevent getting a pop-up and save half a second or something. But in the grand scheme of the run, it really doesn't matter all that much. And the reason we want this unlock is because that is, our, that is actually our first, believe it or not, supply drop. And we need supply drops for later in the run because we'll use them to get helicopters uh, easily. So yeah, so we just got that supply drop. You don't want to cancel. We are going to cancel the contract, but you don't want to do it now. Uh, and the reason why, so right now, I'll, sh I'll show you why. Right now, I can get into this helicopter just fine. If I cancel the contract, which I'll, I'll show you what's going to happen here, but normally you'd actually want to cancel the contract after getting back to the allies. So I'm going to go ahead and do a... Um, a skip here, so I'm going to swap my weapon. There's multiple ways to do this skip, but I'm going to do it by swapping weapons. I'm going to swap my weapons, press start, go down to cancel, and then while the fade out's happening, I'm going to tap up on the support menu, and I just skipped the fade out and the prompt to retry the contract, which saves a bunch of time. Now if I try to get into this helicopter, uh-oh, where's the prompt? There's no more prompt to get into the helicopter. I can't get into it. There's something, this is, this is unique to the Southwest Mafia HQ only. I don't think there's any other place in the game where this happens. When you quit a Mafia contract, gosh, I don't even know what happens. I don't know if, like, the game world, like, re-renders in a weird way, or, like, if, the, if, your, if your vehicle re-renders in a weird way, but you actually cannot get back into your vehicle unless you, like, punch it. So now I can get back in. So that's just a... That's, and some, I actually got lucky there. One punch was enough to get in. Sometimes you have to punch it like six or seven times to get back in. It, it's really weird. It's, it's very consistent, though, that that ends up happening. So I was watching Sniper's world record run, and uh, he does a pretty interesting big brain strat where he actually just shoots the helicopter with his M4 as he's running to it, and that, that kind of nudges it a bit. And that allows him to cancel the contract like while he's moving over to the helicopter so that's an, that's another way you could do this where you could cancel the contract right right away and not need to wait till you're back at the allied hq
So now all we're going to do is just fly back to the Allies. Now I will say one advantage of like ending the contract before you get into the helicopter is that you get the perfect racing line to fly to the Allies because you have their flag on screen. But um, assuming you just know where to go because you're a boss and you've memorized the entire mercenaries map, that's you know not relevant. So if you haven't already turned the Mafia, or sorry, the Allies neutral, which I don't think I have, um, now is when you need to do that. So as I'm flying back here, I'm gonna look for opportunities to basically murder Allies. Well, unfortunately that didn't count. I wanna do it, I basically wanna do it without losing speed. I missed. So I'm, I'm doing a quite a bad job actually demonstrating how to do this quickly. But yeah, so now I'm neutral with them. Um, the other thing you can do is actually you could do something called tax evasion where you... you well, I'll explain tax evasion later. But the, the basic idea is you want the allies to be either neutral, unfriendly, or even hostile going into the ace contract. And the reason for that is because we're going to hijack their Black Hawk at the start of the contract. And you can only do that... Or sorry, commandeer. <laughs> you can only commandeer it if you're at most neutral with the faction that you're trying to take the, the helicopter from. Whew, all right. <clears throat> so now what we're going to do is something called, I like to call a guard dialogue swap. This is only applicable to the allies because the allies are the only contract that ever actually has two like guards that you can speak to. So Garrett uh, has a lot to say to you. Every time you start an ace contract, he gives you a little speech. It takes a lot of time. We don't want to listen to that. We don't have time for that. What we're going to do instead is we're going to talk to this guy who almost never has anything to say. He usually just says, like, go on in. And then... While he's talking, we're going to walk over to Garrett and start his line of dialogue. And what that's going to do is it's going to put us into the HQ as soon as this guy's dialogue is over, but it's going to put us into the HQ for his contract. So we're going to, we're going to accept this guy's contract, but then we're going to accept this contract. Um, and the way we do that is to switch weapons. And then basically, before you've... If, see, we're in the reticle changes. Basically, before the reticle changes... You want to you want to initiate talking to this HQ guard. Then, when the reticle changes, you'll actually be given because otherwise, if I talk to him, I'm not going to be able to move. You have to do this in order to regain control of your player. Um, once the reticle changes, you'll be given control back, and you can walk over to Garrett and then accept his contract as well. So let's do that. Uh, unfortunately, you couldn't really hear much because I have the dialogue turned down. But yeah, so th that that just happened. Um, I guess there's really not much to say. Yeah, let's just go. Let's just get. Let's just get a move on. This contract's pretty easy. So we're gonna have a bit of downtime here. Basically, we're just gonna run backwards and hijack this helicopter. It's pretty simple. Once you, I mean, you might have a bit of trouble getting in at first, just getting the angle right. I hold my analog back and slightly to the right. Uh, I will say the trajectory that this guy flies, as far as we know, is totally random. And you can get really, like, screwed over by him flying in an extremely <laughs> annoying way. What he just did there was almost perfect. That was basically the perfect trajectory, because I'm pointing at exactly where I want to be going. But he can, like, turn completely sideways, which ends up wasting a lot of time, actually, because these big helicopters are... It, it takes a long time to get them to turn side to side. Uh, although I will say, I think it is, you will never get RNG where it's impossible to hijack the Black Hawk. It might seem difficult, but it, it's always possible. I've never not been able to get it. It's just sometimes it takes longer than others. So what we're going to do is we're going to land kind of like this. Um, this is how I like to land anyway, because what it does is it creates a nice little zigzaggy safe landing zone. And it points us in the direction we're going next, which is over there. And with helicopters, generally speaking, but especially with big helicopters, it's really important to land in the direction that you want to be flying to next. Because when you're landing, it's actually pretty easy to, to twist the helicopter in the direction you want to face. But when you're taking off, it's much more, it's much more difficult. So I like, to, I like to get it set up facing the right direction as I'm landing here. But there could be other ways to do this that are faster. And then we're just going to shoot at this thing simple two shots blows it up get back in our helicopter oh hold on i think i've locked the cat in the room i don't are you okay charlie she's kind of rubbing up against me hopefully she's all right so yeah now we're, i'm actually flying totally the wrong direction because i'm petting a cat so we're gonna fly over here and we're just gonna squish this guy <laughs> we're just gonna land directly on him Ideally, you want to land a little bit to the left of him because it'll shoot. See, see how he got shot out to the right side here? That's ideal. That's what we want because that's 
that's where we're getting out of the helicopter. You can get a quick, you can get like an animation skip. Like if his gun, he has like an RPD, if his gun is like right by your driver's side door, you can get an animation or skip to get out of the vehicle quickly, like a quick exit. But um, it really doesn't save much time because you want him to be on the right side of the vehicle anyway. And yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm going to say we're going to spawn at the Mafia because I made a save at the Mafia. That's not typically where you would spawn. Typically you're, you would spawn at the Alley Nash. So I'm going to just medivac because I don't want to be here, actually. And what you're going to do now is um, you're going to go and order a demolition supply drop, and you're going to turn to the right here. So what that's going to do is it's going to get to see how the helicopter is now coming from the left. That's faster than if you called straight ahead, because otherwise he spawns in the mountains. And, all right, and then you're going to shoot him to kill him. Uh, you don't need to bash that box. I just find that sometimes it makes it for a safer landing. Um, but yeah, so so the way these uh, delivery things work is it'll the helicopter will come from a 90, basically, sorry, 100, directly behind you, essentially. It'll fly in exactly the way you're facing. So it spawned exactly behind me, and it's flying in exactly the direction I'm facing. But it's not when you throw it. It's like, it seems to be like when it, like, Touches the ground. We don't really know exactly. Ooh, can I get the tank? It would have been nice to have that box fall on this journalist. Uh, but yeah, so so I like to have it coming from the left because I think that's a little bit faster. Then you're going to release the winch in case you picked up a C4. And you're going to fl fly over here and we're going to steal a North Korean helicopter. Because we're going to need this for... Oh, you can actually also shoot. Like, you can shoot a rocket to kill that guy. Um, so that he doesn't have... A, so basically so that he has no chance of getting into this helicopter and stealing it from you. But it's it's not totally necessary. Then we're gonna fly to the Eight of Hearts. Oh, and by the way, just to explain, I guess I should explain like what the hell just happened in diamonds. Um, <laughs> I didn't even explain how the trick works. The thing we found. So what what happened earlier? The reason I was able to just go do the Ace of Diamonds contract without doing anything in diamonds is basically the game ran a check. When we when we beat, when we succeeded and completed the Jack of Clubs contract, what the game does in every face card contract is it checks, hey, what is the player's intel level at? And if their intel level, which is over here, if their intel level is at 80 or higher, then the game will... Toggle a Boolean tracking whether the ace contract ought to be available to the player. So we were in clubs, and we had our eight number cards, and we had the jack. And so the game was like, okay, you've done, you, you, got, you did it. You got 80 points, uh, and we're going to open up the ace contract for you. Well, however, because we warped, uh, because we then subsequently failed the contract and tricked the game into putting us into the next contract, which happened to be in Diamonds, uh, the game never rechecked. Like, it, it never it never sets is Ace Contract available to false until you complete an Ace Contract. So it, it just carried over over the global flag of, like, should, the, should, should an Ace Contract be available? Yes. So we can just go straight to the Allies and start the Ace Contract for Diamonds, even though we've done literally nothing in Diamonds. Um, and that is the trick that we found that is going to cut so much time in all the categories. All right, <clears throat> moving on. We're going to now do the exact same thing, but for Hearts. So we're going to start by going to the Eight of Hearts. And this is the only uh, number card we're going to get before we start our faction sequence, which in the Northern Province is going to be South Korea. So we're going to fly over here. Uh, we can just blow up these barrels here to kill that guy. I like to land about here, which is, this is, I think, a relatively safe area. Then we can throw a frag here, which, again, is relatively safe. Although I did already damage my helicopter with a dump fire rocket. So I might actually blow it up here. Let's see. Let's see if I get lucky. No. Or, I mean, yes, I did get lucky. So, um, so yeah, I throw a frag there to do an animation to come back. The reason I like to park a little behind that troop tunnel, even though it means a bit of walking, is that this tank that comes out of the tunnel otherwise, well, he's gonna, he's gonna, you know, you're gonna have a bad day with him otherwise. He's gonna, he's gonna mess up your, your helicopter. So yeah, now we're gonna fly over to the South Koreans, and as we're flying to them, we're gonna fire two missiles at their HQ. Then we're gonna land. 
We're gonna, we're gonna all, hopefully already have our missiles equipped. We're gonna walk up to this guy and we're gonna do a trick called tax evasion, which I referenced earlier, but now I'll show you. What we're gonna do is we're gonna blow up the HQ after we've started talking to the guard. Or in other words, we're gonna turn the faction hostile after I've already initiated the guard conversation. And the way you do that is fire, so right trigger to fire, then you press A, and then the guard's dialogue finishes, and then you come inside. Now, South Korea is actually hostile with me. So if I walk outside this door right now, they will be shooting at me. But because I'm going to start a contract with them, the game is going to fail, like do a fail-safe, and it's going to be like, hey, wait a minute, you're not supposed to start a contract hostile with a faction that doesn't make sense we're gonna we're gonna bump you up to exactly one point above hostile um so that so that you know things are things are okay so this is this is actually a safeguard that they they programmed in just so that things didn't break um there's pretty much no other situation where you would get into this mess and by the way it's not a perfect safeguard there actually there actually are tricks you can do to start the contract just dead hostile with them where i walk out of here and these guys are literally just shooting at me but it's it's Kind of a rare glitch more than anything else. Um, and, and it's hard to explain. I'm not going to get into it. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to run over to our helicopter. And we're going to fly to the KIV. And we're going to be scanning the road here. So we, what, ideally what we want is a is a South Green Humvee. But Jajus are okay too. But ideally, you want a South Korean Humvee, because what we're going to do is we're going to blow up the KIV, and then we're going to fly back to the road, and we're going to kill, um, ideally, a South Korean soldier, but a civilian will work, too. The problem with killing civilians is that if the South Koreans, if, if you blow up the KIV, and then the KIV kills that Mafia soldier that's standing next to the KIV, and then the game registers that as your kill, which it doesn't always do, and then the South Koreans witness that kill, which they don't always do then that will bump their mood up by five points. And killing a civilian only lowers their mood by five points. So you'll end up with a net mood change, or a net reputation change with the South Koreans of zero, and you will fail to warp out of the contract. But we got a South Korean, we got a, we got a Humvee here, so we're gonna use that instead. And ideally you start with the driver, and then you, and then you finish off with the gunner. You only need one, but the reason you wanna start with the driver is that the gunner can witness his own death and he can witness the driver's death but the driver cannot witness anyone's death um so if you start with the driver you get twice the amount of opportunities for the gunner to witness you killing them basically uh, and then you're going to retry and we are into the next contract that one's really short and easy you're going to run to the left here hop over this barrier and then you're, you want your at missiles equipped and what you're going to do is you're going to get in you're going to honk the horn you're going to come off the ground a little bit Turn to the left, get him in. You're just gonna turn to like save some time with turning later, and you're gonna fly away. There's a couple ways you can do this contract. This is the fastest way. The easiest way for beginners would be to actually go pick up a journalist. Um, I, I'm not gonna demonstrate that because it's essentially the same thing. Basically a journalist is a little bit easier because uh, you can just shoot him. The problem with the South Korean soldiers is that you have to do a bit of a tricky strat where you actually like s sit on the guy basically. You have to squish him with your helicopter in order to guarantee that you're going to get a faction loss because shooting him is extremely inconsistent because once you bring him into this territory with the Chinese, he's going to get put into an aggro state because the Chinese are going to be shooting at you and that's going to turn him aggroed and it's going to make it so that, like I said earlier, the game likes to forgive friendly fire. It's going to make it so that killing him is almost certainly not going to count as a reputation loss. So the way to consistently instead get a reputation loss is to is to splatter him with your vehicle. For some reason, the game's way less forgiving if you do that. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and we're gonna fly forward here. We're gonna go bada bing. Bada boom. And then we're gonna pick up this ammo. And we're gonna fly over here. Bada bang. And this one. And then we're gonna actually land here, facing pretty much dead forward. We're gonna get out. We're gonna fire a missile at this. Handheld. I think I might have missed. Oh my god. Oh, this is not good. And we're gonna squish this guy if I can. Ah, oh, I got him. <laughs> I actually was struggling, so there was. I don't know if you guys could tell, but because I was hitting those missile pods on the right side of the vehicle, 
the game was doing the animation of me trying to get in the vehicle, but I wasn't. It wasn't quite working, and it actually changed my reticle to like the RPG reticle because of that. Um, I I barely got that. <laughs> I barely got that trick. But yeah, so basically the idea is then you get back into your helicopter, fly up a little bit, and then just sit on the guy. <laughs> um, it is a hundred percent consistent. I'll just say it's a hundred percent consistent. It, you, you can accidentally get a sideways splatter on him. Like, what you don't want to do is you don't want to just swipe left and, like, run him over that way. Uh, you don't want to back up and hit him. You want to make sure that it counts as a kill. You don't want to accidentally do what we call sideways splattering um, and, and or a pacifist kill, essentially, and uh, have it not register. And the, and the best way to do that is to just straight up and down, just, just sit on the guy. All right, so now we're in the next contract. And what we're going to do here is we're going to just go around the world and get all of the number cards. Uh, and I'm not really going to talk through this that much because it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the one thing I will say is that these guys can be pretty grenade happy. So if you want to play it safe, I'll tell you which ones are, are sketchy. Most of them are okay. Most of them you can just kind of fly up, shoot them, and get out okay. But some of them are real sketchy and they'll throw a lot. Yep, I, look at that. Look. What did I say? So my helicopter is toast now. Look at that grenade placement. That is right under my helicopter. Let's see what happens here. So that might not have... Eh, 70... It's not too bad. I'm actually... Something something weird happened there. That should have done more damage, but it did. And I think it was because I was coming out of an animation that something just kind of broke there. But yeah, so then we come and we pick up this journalist. We fly over here. Get this guy. And we want stun grenades out for every single one of these guys, I think. Because we're going to be so close to our helicopter. <clears throat> but yeah, something interesting that's happening here, another interesting facet of this new, uh, this new trick we discovered, is um, the game will actually, when we fail the contract, the game will actually reset. It won't reset the face card we got, but it will reset. I'm not even flying the right direction. This guy's over here. And there is an RPG enemy here that's like kind of sketchy. So, wait, is this even who I... Yeah, this is the right guy. So that guy right there, that RPG enemy, he's usually worth taking out. Uh, there's also an enemy with a stinger missile, but typically the stinger missile enemies in this game just, like, don't do anything. Um, so that's less of a concern. He's on the roof there. You can see him on to the left. All right, then we're going to fly basically dead ahead. Go for this next guy. This guy's a little awkward because you got to kind of, like, you got to descend real aggressively on him. Oh, see that? See how I bonked on the mountain? That's exactly what I'm talking about. The other thing that's tricky about this guy is it's hard to get the angle to shoot him. So I got a disguise, which is nice, but... Um, oh, that's not good. Okay, so what I just did there, I recognized that there was a frag coming. My helicopter's low on health. So I actually did not do an animation skip. I wanted this animation to play out, because as long as I'm in the animation here, doing like taking the picture of the card, everyone is invincible. My vehicle's invincible, nothing can do damage. So I basically just nerfed that grenade. Although my helicopter is still not doing great because of how I landed, but we should be okay. This next number card is the sketchiest one. This is the one where it really pays off because these guys have anti-armor rifles and they're extremely frag happy. So I, I'd recommend, I mean, right now I kind of need to because I'm so low on health, but normally in a run I wouldn't kill these guys. I would probably take the gamble and just go for it. But um, I would say for, for beginner runners, it, it, might be, it might behoove you to take all those guys out. But yeah, so something interesting here, another aspect of the trick. So when you fail a contract, which we need to do for the contract warps, um, the game will reset all of the number cards you, you, you captured or verified. It won't reset face cards, weirdly. Don't know why. Uh, probably because they're like specifically tied to a contract. So the game, the game is like, well, he did complete the contract, so he must have gotten the face card. But it doesn't do that for... Um, and by the way, there's an RPG enemy here, too. That's kind of sketchy. Uh, and this, there's a Stinger Missile here. here. And he's actually one of the most active stinger missile enemies that I've ever encountered. Um, so he can be—he can definitely be worth um, taking some time to to kill. So the game is actually going to reset all of these guys that we're getting. So it's going to be actually kind of funny. At the end of the game, we're going to look back at our stats, and we're going to see that we only got one heart number card. Uh, but again, because the game checks for whether the ace contract should be unlocked before it goes through the functions for like failing a contract, totally fine. We've, we've toggled that the ace contract's available, even though we don't have 80 points of intel anymore, 
like it 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 never unsets the value of the ace contract being available. All right, one more number card, and then we'll go to the final objective. You want to make sure you save your missiles too, because we'll need them for the building at the end. There's a oh. okay. That frag was pretty far away. There's a bunch of RPG enemies and stinger missile guys here, but as long as you're quick, they almost never do anything. I've never had any issues with them shooting at me as long as I get in and out of here quickly. And that's in like every category, not just any percent. So yeah, now we're a bit gonna fly almost directly toward the big yellow target. We're gonna we're gonna veer slightly left though, and the reason for that is it's gonna take three AT missiles to destroy the building. So we're actually gonna need to fire two missiles and then pick up an ammo crate. And that actually doesn't waste any time because we want to end up. We our final target is to the left anyway, so this is actually like pretty optimal pathing, regardless. All right, so then we're gonna pick that up, and then we're gonna fly back up, fire one more, I, and you want to kind of aim your shots to the right of the building. Here, I'll actually uh, let me actually focus on that a little bit more. So the building, if you fire w over to the left over here, and I think it's because if you can see, there's two RPG enemies that my reticle just turned red for one of them. Yeah, that guy. There's an R there's an RPG enemy there, and there's an RP enemy, uh, <laughs> RPG enemy to the left. I think because those guys are there, if you shoot the building a little more to the left, it it counts as a hostile act. So like right now I have a disguise, so nobody's shooting at me. Um, and that's because I, I shot, generally speaking, at the right side of this building. And the reason you want to maintain your disguise is that there is a SAM turret over here that is in direct view of where we're going to be landing. Um, speaking of which, did I? I just want to make sure I didn't pick up a blueprint. I don't think I did. I, I was worried about this during Banter's run too, but yeah, no, it doesn't look like I did. Sorry, but back to what I was saying. So we're going to land over here. And we're gonna we're gonna press the left trigger to get out. So we're gonna leave the journalist in the vehicle. We're gonna normally this guy is at the door like right when you land, but I, I I was hovering for so long that he had time to spawn. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna immediately call an expo two. Ideally you have your AT missiles out already, by the way. But we're gonna call an expo two kind of from like this angle. We're gonna then we're gonna immediately blow up this Sam's the biggest priority. Then this Sam. And then you can blow up the tank, but honestly he doesn't really do much. At this point, actually, this guy's a threat. Normally he's not here. But he is here right now, and he's a threat, so I'm going to take him out. All right, and then what you want to do is kill this guy. The reason you want to kill that gunner is a totally different reason than why we killed him before. The reason you want to kill him this time is because he will try to shoot through this building to kill the targets that are back there. And in doing so, he will just he will kill the journalist. Uh, and we're going to use the journalist to get our warp, so we don't want that to happen. Now we're going to go pick up the number card, or the face card, sorry. We're going to do our little running trick. And all we're going to do is just kill the journalist. We have to use, we cannot use the AT missile for this, by the way. So, oh, I got the skip. Nice. You have to use your carbine. I don't know why. For some reason, if you shoot your helicopter with the AT missile, I think if you direct hit the guy, it would probably work. But if you shoot the helicopter and kill the journalist that way, the game doesn't want to register that you killed him for some reason. I, I don't know why, because like typically that does count if you have like a civilian in your vehicle, but on this contract, it's real finicky. So yeah, so we just killed him. We turned the South Koreans hostile, and now we are going to skip from hearts to spades. And I think you know the routine at this point. Now, at this point, the safest thing to do is to just run over here, you know, do your contract cancel thing, get in your helicopter and fly to the to the Allied HQ. However, I'm pretty sure the fastest thing is actually to medivac and bank on getting good RNG. Getting, oh, we didn't get it. There's a Humvee that can spawn right here. And if you get that, that I think is a couple seconds faster. But right now this Humvee I got, or sorry, this RNG I got is garbage. I didn't get a Humvee there. I didn't get a Humvee there. I didn't get the press truck. Although I think that's consistent that you don't get the press truck. Um, and so actually with this RNG, I think the next fastest strat is to just get another helicopter. Okay, I'm on my way. But I could be wrong on that. But yeah, so this is a matter of kind of risk. If you want to medivac and go for the go for the the gamble of the Humvee spawn, you can do that. Otherwise you can just you can just take your helicopter that you already had um, and uh, fly back to the Allied HQ. But yeah, so then we're just gonna do another little dialogue skip here, or dialogue swap. And, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. And we're just going to do the Ace of Spades. So what you're going to do is spam Y here. Clear the pop-ups that you're going to get for driving a tank. 
Then you're gonna take out your, don't do any inputs of directions here, just take out the drop and, and throw it at the tank. Then you're gonna stand here, look in this general direction, you need to be looking generally to the right. And then we're gonna stand right here. Oh, it didn't work, and you know what? You know what, it didn't work in my offline run either. I wonder if something has changed with something in this route is causing a bit of, either that or I'm doing this trick wrong. Cause this should be an easy trick and I have not been able to get this recently. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so that's that's the trick. I don't know why. I, maybe it's more precise. I mean, the thing is, so the way this guy flies is affected by so many, like, tiny little variables. I think literally the thing that changed, this is actually what I think happened. I think you actually have to watch him fly in. Like, track him with your, with your reticle. Track him flying in. Um, the other thing you can do is just, like, if you don't want to do that because it's kind of a tricky strat, you can just, like, call in a, another demolition supply drop and shoot the shoot the pilot. Um, it, it, this this only saves, I think, like, two or three seconds, so it's not really a big deal. That's actually a pacifist strat that got, got incorporated to any percent. But, yeah, then we're just going to land there. Be careful not to bonk. You know, just take the landing slow. If, if you bonk on one of those boxes, you could end up pinballing, and you could very quickly lose a helicopter doing that. So... Um, but yeah, that hijack strat. Uh, I think you have to actually track him with your reticle as he's flying in. And then right when he's about to drop the box, then you look at the ground to make sure that you're at the right spot under his shadow to, to get the hijack. <clears throat> All right, so we're almost done with the run. I mean, as you can tell, if you've gotten this far, by the way, if you've gotten this far, hype, uh, leave a, uh, leave a, Matthias happy in the comments of the YouTube video if you if you, if you got this far uh, But yeah, if, if you if you've gotten this far you can probably tell if you've watched some of the other speed runs This is a way Way easier run than it used to be by the way take out your AT missiles and also you should probably fire one off uh, Well, no, actually that strat's dead. You don't need to do that. Ignore me. Don't don't fire off a rocket Okay, so now what you're gonna want to do the fastest route here is to fly over this corner and kind of tuck in close here. It's, it, and then get low so that they don't shoot you. Don't do that, actually. I'm I'm doing the wrong strats. So what you would do then is you tuck in here and then hover up. And as soon as... you got to wait for this to be a target. If you destroy the computer before it's an objective, the game, the, the contract's off locked. Well, sort of. you got to just wait for the six minutes to expire and just fail the objective. Um, so, what, yeah, you fly in here and then cover up. And as soon as that turns yellow, boom. And then I gotta be quiet here. Stand here. I think that was a little too late. Ah, nice, perfect. Okay, wow, I'm glad I got that. So yeah, so the trick there, this is, <laughs> this is an advanced one. Um, I'm gonna just take some time to talk through what the hell just happened. So basically, this is this is one of the hardest things in the entire game, and and it's made worse by the fact that unless you're playing on an emulator, you can't use save states. Like you have to do this whole damn contract over and over again. You got to sit through the prison sequence. It's a big pain in the butt. Uh, this is definitely something that for new runners, I highly recommend. Unless you are very dedicated, I highly recommend you just um, you just blow up the computer and then fly over the wall and go get General Song when he's landing. You can still shoot him when he's landing and then get him over there. But uh, what we just did there is called the General Song Spawn Kill. And the basic idea, what I've worked out, is that you um, come in, you destroy the computer, you do a real quick landing, switch to your AT missiles, come over here, stand on, see this little, this little cross on the ground? I like to stand just a tiny bit in front of that, just like right about here. Then I position my head, the top of my head I position it, right on the line here of this corner. And then, so once I got it positioned, then I just look straight up as high as I can. And then as soon as she says, and go get so like right when she's saying the S in song, that's when I fire. And I immediately just start running forward in the hopes that I got him. Then we do a little final animation skip here. And that's it. Oh, that, I, that's actually when you would, uh, you don't even need to do an animation skip, actually. You can just press Y. Um, because the timing now ends. Timing ends now as soon as you press Y. And that's the run.
it used to end right there when that red X, or sorry, when we press continue right here, that was when the run used to end, but for various reasons, we changed it recently. Not going to lie, it totally could change again, but for now, the run ends <laughs> right when you press Y, either to verify Song or to load him into the helicopter. So, um, now in theory, that does mean that like while you're waiting for the game to end, you could die, you could turn the allies hostile, you could just quit, you could just like literally quit the contract, you could do things to fail, and at that point your run would be invalidated because you didn't finish the game. But uh, we're treating it as the last required input, right? So once you press Y, the game is on rails. Like, you've, you've finished the game at that point. 